What's going on guys? The CTA Prime back here again with another LaunchBox tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to properly set up your tank stick inside of LaunchBox 9.8 with the all new keyboard automation feature. Now this pretty much applies to any arcade stick or any arcade controller that's based on keyboard inputs like the tank stick here. In the past, we were able to use the tank stick, but in order to exit games properly and come back to Big Box or LaunchBox, we had to insert a script. But with the all new keyboard automation that was added to LaunchBox 9.8, that's no longer necessary. And we can now map multiple keyboard inputs for Big Box so we can set up the left hand side and the right hand side to work properly inside a Big Box. So the first thing I want to show you is how to map the keys. I do have a keyboard plugged into this PC so we can navigate the options menu. And to get here, just press escape on your keyboard. You'll use your arrow keys to navigate and enter will select whatever we choose. We want to choose options. Towards the bottom of the option menu, we have two sections, keyboard mappings and the new section, keyboard automation. First up, let's go into keyboard mappings. Out of the box, the tank sticks left stick is already set up to up, down, left, right as a keyboard input. So we don't need to remap the left stick. It's already set up for LaunchBox and Big Box. With the latest version of LaunchBox 9.8 or higher, we can map multiple keys per input inside a big box. So all we need to do is now set up the right hand stick. It's going to add those extra inputs here. We can do up to four per button. So as you see, my left hand stick is already mapped as up, down, left, right. And my right hand stick was just mapped as RFDG because that's what the encoder is putting out. It's putting out keyboard signals. Mapping the rest of the buttons is really going to be up to you because you might use different keys than I use. So all you need to do is go down the list and map your left hand side and right hand side. That way we have both sides working inside a big box. Like I mentioned, this method is going to work with pretty much any arcade controller as long as it's using keyboard inputs. So now that I've set up basic navigation inside a big box with both sides of my arcade stick, it's time to move on to keyboard automation. From the settings menu, we're going to move down to options, and then we're going to find keyboard automation. Like I mentioned, this is only going to work on LaunchBox 9.8 or higher. Make sure you have use keyboard automation checked. From here, we need to set up a hold key. You can set that up as any key you'd like. I usually use my one player key on the tank stick. The hold key is going to be the one that we hold down, and then we can map our other buttons to close the active window, show launch box, increase volume, decrease volume, and my favorite, show pause screen. Again, these button or keyboard combinations can work in any way, so it's really going to be up to you how you want to map this section out. So I've set up my automation keys to my liking. Like I mentioned, it's really up to you how you map this. You can experiment with it, keep going back and changing it if you really need to. So now it's time to test it out. My favorite thing about the new update is the pause screens because we can save, load, reset game, and even exit the game from the pause screen. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on. Here's the Sega Genesis game running in RetroArch. I'm going to go ahead and start it up. And now, without having to input any custom scripts for this particular controller that I'm using, I can press my hold button and then press the hotkey I set up to enter the pause menu. And from here, I can resume game, reset game, save state, load state, or exit game. You can also just use the close active window key and that'll shut down the emulator if you don't want to use the pause screens. So that's pretty much it for the new keyboard automation feature built into LaunchBox 9.8 or higher. It works great on the tank stick or any other arcade stick that uses an encoder that sends keyboard inputs to your PC. Personally, I've been using these pause screens a lot. I absolutely love the fact that we can save and load. We can even reset the game from here or exit. Inside of RetroArch, it does notify me at the bottom when I do a save or load. I'm going to go ahead and load. There's the save state I just created. Try the reset. That'll reset the game for me. And finally, exit. Makes it so much easier to get back into Big Box or Launch Box when using an arcade stick like this. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. We really appreciate you watching and hope this fixes some of the arcade sticks out there that were having trouble in the past. Now, don't get me wrong. A lot of them did work with custom scripts, but this is just going to make it easier for everybody. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.